Native people today celebrate their history and traditions. In this chapter, you will read about different groups of Indians who lived in Wisconsin thousands of years ago. As the climate warmed up, plant and animal life changed. The ways people lived changed too. You will recognize these changes as you read through the chapter. Who are Wisconsin's first people? Native people have lived on the North American continent for thousands and thousands of years. Many different groups of Native people lived in the area that we now know as Wisconsin. Native people are also known as the first people. For example, the Menominee and the Ho-Chunk people are two of the Indian nations in Wisconsin today. They tell stories of their ancestors who lived here thousands of years ago. Other Indian nations in Wisconsin today arrived here much later. The earliest Wisconsin Indians adapted or changed their way of living as the land and weather changed. This adaptation happened very slowly, as you can tell, by looking at the timeline on page 38 and 39. You'll learn just how people's homes, foods, hunting, and ways of living adapted to the changes in the land and weather. Indian nations in the state today continue to adapt, yet they still honor the stories and memories of their ancestors. Each nation has its own language, history, and traditions. Each nation also has its own creation story that tells of the tribe's beginning. Tribal elders have passed down the nation's history and culture in stories, art, and songs to the next generation. You'll read a Menominee story on the next page. Don't forget before we go to the next page, take a look at the map here. Notice how it is telling us about the Ho-Chunk and Menominee lands. Up here we have Menominee people and down low we have some of the Ho-Chunk people. Maybe you've heard of Ho-Chunk as a casino. I also notice on this map a red blop for a Indian or as we refer to now Native American reservation. It's a little chunk of land that is just for the Native American people. I'll also notice on the bottom of the page, some definitions here for words that might be new or challenging. For example, we have elders passing down nation's history and culture. Those are the older people in the tribe. Let's go to the next page and read the Menominee story. How did the Menominee people come into being? A Menominee sacred legend tells of the tribe's beginning along the shores of the Menominee River. First, the creator made the world and all living things. He made the lakes, rivers, rocks, mountain, hills, and valleys of grandmother earth. Then a light colored bear traveled along the banks of the river. He spoke with the creator. The bear explained that he was lonely. He wanted to change his form. The bear wished to be a human being. The creator agreed and changed the bear into the first Menominee. The first Menominee continued walking along the riverbank until he spied a golden eagle circling high in the sky. He called the eagle down and asked it to be his brother. The creator also permitted the eagle to change form. Now there were two Menominee brothers. Each became the head of a clan or a group of native people with the same ancestor and their descendants became the clan. The two brothers came upon other animal spirits. One by one, these also became brothers. Each clan has its own story and joining of the first two Menominee brothers. Together, the clans form the Menominee people. Today, the Menominee people live along the banks of the Wolf River in Menominee County. The Menominee knew this land as the place where everything is good. So you can take a look at this sculpture here that's kind of highlighting that bear we had in the story. And we have another text feature down here. Let's read the caption to see what's going on in this photo. It says, this Menominee sculptor, James Frechette at work. As a child, he listened to tribal elders tell stories of Menominee traditions. As an adult, he carved the light colored bear to the right. You can see the Menominee clan story on display at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Library. All right, that's all we have for our reading today.